Shalom, Shalom, giving all praise to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Bashem Kodash. And I'm going to entitle this video, well, there's more than one title I'm thinking of. The main title, the number one title, is um, voca Racist Vocab Malone Calls Us Coons. He can say that and get away with it. And uh, the second title would be the Jake that follow Vocab Malone wind up in this heaven. And this is a YouTube video, Key and Pill, Negro Town, uns <laughs> uns Uncensored. If I remember, I'll leave this link in the description box. But if I don't, go to Comedy Central. This was put out in 2015. Watch the whole video, uh, Key and Pill, Negro Town, Uncensored. Okay, let me go over here. And I'm kind of going to be all over the place, like I normally am. Not hitting no one particular topic, but let's, let's see how long I stay on this topic. Anyway, I made the statement that... Uh, uh, Vocab Malone is a racist. Oh, he made him, by the way, he made a video. He's about to make a video uh, based upon the uh, Miley Cyrus song. Oh, he said that Miley Cyrus uh, was an Edomite. Miley Cyrus is a Jake. She's one of us. She's either, she's either, she might be Gad or she might be of the kingdom of Judah, meaning Judah, Benjamin, Levi. I would say more likely Judah. Because she's from that, you know, Irish, Scottish, uh, you know, going south, southwest. That's where that music came from, that the Irish, Scottish, the the uh, the Grand Ole Opry, those, uh, they were great singers. No, and the reason why they were great singers, because the most, of, most of them were Jake, that looked like Edomites. So Miley Cyrus... You can see the way she dances, the way she sings, that she's definitely got to be a Jake. Because you got Jakes that look like everybody. <clears throat> so let me see where I'm going to go with this. All right, it's 11.30. Vocab. Vocab. Malone. Okay, this is uh, his main page. Rescuing women trapped in Hebrew Israelism and Sister Cherry. Which you brothers from, some of you brothers were called, better known as, uh, also known as uh, Vocab Malone's uh, pet gorilla. I didn't say that. I'm just saying what they said, what other GMS members started calling it. Vocab Malone's pet gorilla. And um, he got a little upset about it. He said, they even call him Sister Cherry, my pet gorilla. And he, just, and he started laughing. If you can find that video. If you can find it, please send it to me. I got another one, Smoke Room, with the homie Eric. Okay, let me do this. Let me do this here. Okay. Put in your how shy. Yeah, ha, wa, shy. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, I got to put something. <clears throat> let me let me do this. Private I 
I don't know if that's two words or one word. Okay, I found it. And this is a, f a fair use. Um, okay, let me go right here. Bear me for a minute. Okay, watch this. He's gonna call Jake a bunch of coons. And he does he has no fear about this. He's a straight up racist. He doesn't he doesn't respect us as a people. And why do you niggas give him the platform? Why do you even sit down and talk to him? We don't take him seriously. Um, so let me let you hear it right about here, I guess. Just uh, call him Edomite. Cracker. Oh, he's black. Oh, call him Coon. Call, call him Coon. We'll trip time. Call him Coon. Yes. Private eye for your house, your service. Shalom, Holmes. Coon, we'll trip time. Call him Coon. Oh, call him Coon. Call, call him Coon. We'll trip time. Call him Coon. Yes. Private eye for your house, your service. Shalom, Holmes. Yes. Come coon, we'll trip your time. Oh, call him coon. Call, call him coon, we'll trip your time. I'm a coon. You heard it three times. Well, nine times altogether. He said the word coon. Call him a coon. Call him a coon. Coon, C O O N, refers to a black man that wants to be white. The ultimate coon, the king of coonery would be Uncle 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 Ruckus. And the, fo and the followers, the Jake followers, the black followers of, of uh, Boca Malone are a bunch of coons. Because when they pray to Jesus, <clears throat> in, their, in, in their mind's eye, in, their pic in the picture in their head, there's a picture of a white man, guaranteed. Now they can say no. Okay, you can say what you want to say. So let's go to, to this next one. We're gonna. He has no respect for the Israelites. So why even give him a platform? Okay, let me give you this one here. Nobody wants to hear your freestyles. Let me, I'm sorry, let me do this. Let me come back. Party in the UPK. And these uh, look like members of uh, <clears throat> UPK because it's, I mean, it's the, the song, the, title of the song is UPK. <clears throat> so guys, there's not some doctrine about Hebrewism in the moon per se. We're just having that as a line where they're saying they're going to fly to the moon. And here is a real guy. This is General Kabam Gabar. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it properly you know, according to their strange language, but he's a Hebrew's like, he dresses like a medieval warrior. This is actually his outfit. Jonathan, is this from a real picture? Now, 
school wasn't at where Applebee's is right now. We were down there a couple of months ago. Anyway, you know what I'm going to do? Let me do this. Because they're just talking about, I guess this guy. Let me see something. But what did they say about the star of David? They say it was a star of Molex. Can you break that down or do you know? This guy, Brother Jay, I think he's out of there. You know, you don't even see him no more. He's not, he's so insignificant. He used to be part of the ISUBK and he left the ISUBK. And he be, where did he go to? The puppet master, the vocab Malone. And this is obviously looks like kosher chips. Um, this obviously looks like uh, uh, um, Captain Desariak, and um, supposedly that's his wife giving him money. No job and oh so lazy. Saying the Hebrew Israelites, no job and no so lazy. Let me do this. Let me do this. Uh, bear with me for a minute. Let me bring this back over here. And like I said, he wanted to to give this instead of party in the U, UPK it was it was I think it was slavery in the USA to mock to mock mock us because we're teaching we teach that anyone enslaved us, which is backed up you know with the Bible, the scriptures of course. So let me let you listen to a little of this. So you know, bottom line is no no Jake so, you know. Sonetta or any of them shouldn't have this guy be in the same room with this guy. He's a clown. He's a real clown. Um, so let's listen to some of it. Come on, everybody. It's a party today in the UK. <laughs> You know, it's obvious that he's making mockery of uh, the ISUPK, not all the groups, but, you know, ISUPK, uh, because he has no respect. And see, I understand that he's an Edomite, you know, he's supposed to do that. He's, supposed, he's, he's a devil, he's supposed to play the part of the devil. But these Jakes that follow him, and give me, give me a second here. Um, sick car. 
three. Hope I spelled it right. Bear me for a minute. Oh, you got an ex a car, remember, that leaves. And he goes right to the devil. Bear me for a minute. I'm just trying to find this video here. It's another coon right here. Bear me for a minute. A Sakari draws, a Sakari defends drawing guns. Now, right here, this Edomite, you know, appeared to go into his back to pull out something. They were justified. Now, if this guy did it to cops and the cops shot him up, they got on video, the cops would have been justified. So they were justified in what they what they were doing. Okay, this one, a Sakari abandons camp, which they should have stood, held his ground. What am I looking for? Uh, this is like the first official, or one of the first official videos where uh, Sakari, I mean, um, Vocab actually sat down with uh, Sakari. And, you know, Sakari, you know, they answered the questions. It's a good, good video. Which one am I looking for? Oh, damn. Give me a second here. Because there's one he said that he's threatened by the one Westers, meaning physically threatened. So you got to put it in your how shot. Let me try it again. Yeah. How what? Yeah, how what? Shy. Okay, let's see. Okay, this is where he says, this is why do some Hebrew Israelites threaten people? And he's very paint, he's taking a broad brush and painting paint with it. He doesn't specifically mention what specific Israelites have threatened him. So let's listen to this. Feeling, um, the classic unjustified triumphalism right now. But let me tell you what's really going on. The church, to be frank with you, has totally ignored you guys for a long time. They haven't taken you serious because the doctrine is so horrendous that a lot of people don't want to take it serious. And so you guys have gotten free pass. You've been running around, bad mouth in the church, dissing people, debating construction workers with their lunch pails as if you won some victory or some Pentecostal lady who doesn't know what she's talking about, some homeless guy who's half inebriated and being all amped up because you defeat them or smash them. Now things are changing slowly but surely. The apologists are coming in, and you guys aren't going to be able to have a free pass doctrinally anymore. And what I've seen is some of you get really amped about it, and that's why I get threats against my life all the time by One Westers because they don't really want to debate. They just want to see my life in. And I think by one way. Some of you get really amped about it, and that's why I get threats against my life all the time by One Westers, because they don't really want to... Could you do a video on that explaining who you got... What threats did you receive or get from a, a GMS? What threats did you get from the IUIC? What threats did you get from a, a Sakari? What threats did you get from... 
IACPK, uh, IUIC. I mentioned some of the main groups. Please do a video on it. And and if you're getting threats from, from these groups, these one Westers, why do you go around them? And sometimes you go around them by yourself. When you came around us, my camp, myself and Apostle Gabar and Apostle Rhyme Lab at that time, you came up with a small army. Like, like oh, just in case they tried to, you know damn well we were going to do that, man. Oh, you set up right in front of that same week, you set up right in front of uh, the ICGJC. And it was you and um, Adam Coleman, I believe. And you would, you know, went into, the, went into the script, you know, you were reading out of the scriptures. So if you're so threatened, why would you go, would, would a, a so-called black man go to say I'm being threatened or know that they can be killed by the KKK? Where have you ever seen a black man go right in front of a cross burning in the middle of nowhere in the woods, knowing that he could be hung or killed? Where'd you ever see a black man? A black man in his right man mind would not do that. So you're that brave and you're that bold that you're willing to risk your life to push the gospel. That's bullshit, man. Ain't nobody from GMS threatened you. Ain't nobody from IUIC threatened, threatened you. And you call us coons. And then in the same video right here, you say, oh, we, you, Christians don't take you seriously. Well, you should, we don't take you seriously. You're a joke. And every time you, you, you come up with a, a, uh, some that you know debunk debunking what we say. We what do what do I do? What do most of us do? We make counter videos explaining what those scriptures mean. Like you said, Ephesians, something to the uh, title was something to the effect of Ephesians two as the Israelites kryptonite. No, it's not because it speaks Ephesians two the whole chapter. As a matter of fact, the whole uh, book of Ephesians. Uh, Israelites. Paul made them journeys because he he was an apostle of Gentiles, meaning Israelites that didn't know that they were Israelites. He magnified his magnified his office by going to Asia Minor on his journeys. There was actually five journeys, but there was three major journeys. So now let's let's listen again. Let me bring this back. You guys aren't going to be able to have a free pass doctrinally anymore. And what I've seen is some of you get really amped about it. And that's why I get threats against my life all the time by one Westers because they don't really want to debate. They just want to see. Give, name me, give me, let's get into specifics. What group, what name did, did, did Alizar threaten you? Did Bishop Nathaniel threaten you? Did General Yohanna threaten you? Did Taha? Elder Taha, myself, did I threaten you? As a matter of fact, when you came out among us, when we left, we shook your hand. So what? So don't tell me you, you were threatened. That's bullshit, man. But you're a devil. Ye of your father, the devil, and the less of your father, you will do. That old serpent, which is the devil, you are the devil. The word devil, Satan means adversary. Shatan means adversary, meaning enemy. You're the enemy to, to Israelites. And you're hell bent, bent on trying to get people to believe that we're not the people, which means that what? That you believe that the small hats are those people and you can't prove it. What prophecy have they fulfilled? Did they fulfill Isaiah 2 verse 2? Did they fulfill Micah 4 verse 2? I believe it's 4 verse 2 around there. As you read down 4 verse 4, I believe. Is it 4? Four verse two to about four. If you go to UN building on the opposite side of the street of UN UN building where the stairs are, uh, there's a there's a uh, a placket, whatever you want to call it, chiseled. That that quotes uh, I believe it's My, uh, Micah four verse four. Nations shall not learn war. Uh, nations shall not learn war anymore. Beat your your swords and the pruning your your, your uh, spears and the pu puning hooks, 
nation shall not learn war any, anymore. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, that shows you right there. Why didn't they have a Hindu proverb up there? Why didn't they have a um, Sanskrit? I don't, why did they have the Bible? Because they're basically saying that we hope or we believe that the people that are in the land of Israel are the people. They're not the people. And it makes me believe, leads me to believe that the UN, the ultimate controllers and make the people that came up with the whole concept of the UN, which before that was, uh, what was it called? It was called, after World War I, it was called the, uh, what was it called? Uh, it wasn't called a unit. Uh, it was a Federation of Nations. It was called something else. I believe it was the Federation. Somebody helped me out. But it was like pushed out and out of the world and accepted. And then it was after World War II that they came, they changed the name. Can't think of the actual name. Uh, Feder Federation of Nations. I forget the actual name. Then he said UN, like, a, like there's a whole different group of people. Let's come up with the UN. UN. A United Federation of Nations or something like that. I forget the name. I normally know it. It's in the back of my head. When, when, I, when I turn this video off, when I close this uh, video, it'll come right to me. Or it, it should come back to me. Something of nations. I'm not going to go into it. So let's listen to a little bit more. So that's a major lie that we go around threatening them because he's not going to, he's, he's going to say, well, uh, uh, Alizar, he said, you're going to shoot me if I'm, if, if, if I come back to the camp or something like that. No, that doesn't happen, man. That's why you freely go around the camps with your coons. That's why you're going to wind up in Negro town. Your, that when they go to heaven, so let's let's uh, listen to a little bit more. See my life in, and I think you guys actually are the ones who are in the desperation stage. You're going to see my threats against my life all the time. Some of you get really amped about it, and that's why I get threats against my life all the time by one lesson because they don't really want to. All the time, meaning all, all meaning all the time. There's people that call you on your phone. You sitting down at a diner eating, and some guy give you your 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 egg, your bacon and eggs, and he got a, a, a you know a, a suit on, but under the suit is fringes. We gonna get you, vocab. That's that's how he's saying. That's what that means. Let's listen to that again. This is, this guy is a blatant liar. But why? Because he's the devil. Not really anymore. And what I've seen is some of you get really amped about it, and that's why I get threats against my life all the time by one westerners. Because they don't really want to debate, they just want to see my life in. And I think you guys actually are the ones who are in the desperation stage because you realize that Christians are no longer giving your doctrine a free pass. It, things are changing, and it's gonna. Every time you Christians roll up, you get beat beat down. Punks jump up to get beat down. You get you're getting beat down scripturally. You're getting beat down based upon the facts. And uh, we deem you as a major joke in this thing. And anytime I need to, a topic for a video, all I got to do is go to uh, Bocas page. And later on, I'm going to watch the, the video on uh, Israelite women. What is it? Let me bring it back up. Where am I? Okay, let me bring this back up. I'm basically speaking out loud. Uh, racism is alive and well in um, America. Never died. Never slowed down. Okay, let me go back to vocab. Okay, here it is. Here goes uh, vocab's Pet gorilla rescuing women trapped in Hebrew Israelism um, 
Sister Sister Cherry. I want to see this just to see who that woman is. And we don't have women in the, in the GMS. We have women that follow us on, you know, the videos. But there ain't no women coming down to the camp and they have members of the uh, card-carrying members of GMS. So we know it's not a woman from GMS. Trapped. Trapped meaning there's no way out. Which, you know, you're suggesting that we're a cult. That, that you can't leave. You can't leave. And we kick out people all the time. It's more like with GMS, you can't stay. You can't stay. Because we're an action camp. I call it an action Jackson camp. We're constantly out there. Check any of the GM, any, any GMS members that have a camp and they ain't been out there. They, their name is going to come up. I'm not going around checking every video to see if they, let me see if, no. It's, it's, it's an honor system. If you start off strong in this truth and you're out here all the time, then you slacking. You take, a, you, you take two weeks off and you come back for three weeks. You take three weeks off, you come back for one week. You know, you're, 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 not, you're not there going through the motion, so to speak. Um, we're going to question you on that. And then if you, and if you continue to do it, we're going to say, look, you're out the camp. Now you can watch us on videos. You can come out to the camp, but you're not going to be in, on the, on the, you're going to be on the outside looking in, so to speak. And then the spirit might open it back up when you come back in. But once you come into this thing, you got to be on fire, man. I did a lesson on turning your back on the plow. Out of his belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. The word flow means like a, like a gush of water, constantly like a falls. Niagara Falls, that's a, a constant um, a rush of water. Constant rush of water. Doesn't stop, doesn't take breaks. Well, that's what a, the Lord said what? What is that? Uh, uh, St. John 7, 38, around the, seven, around the 35th verse, 36, 37, 37 verse, 36 and 37 verse. Whether will he go to the Gentiles, uh, teach the Gentiles, you know, amongst the Gentiles and all that. That's 35, 36 and 37 read. Well, he says, if you drink this water, you shall never thirst. And he even told that to the woman at the well. And out of your belly, not only will you drink this water, but this you would others that want to that thirst, you will give them this truth too, because out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. What is the rivers of living water? The truth that is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Kodash, because we're working through the uh uh Kodash or the um, ha Raka Kodash or the Raka Kodash, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit Holy, the Spirit Holy, which is the Comforter. The Bible is not the Comforter, the Spirit that comes with the Bible, which is the Holy Spirit, which can be Yahweh Shai, came to Paul. That's the Holy Spirit. I shall not leave you comfortless, I shall come to you. That's the Lord saying. So He's a Comforter. The Holy Spirit is a Comforter. Okay, so that's it. Re re rescuing, I'm sorry, rescuing, I said recruiting, rescuing women trapped in Hebrew Israelism. And the, and the scriptures say this, the flock of my pastor are men. The most high is dealing with the men. Now, women can come into the truth too. Some of the women play an important role, but the most high is dealing with men. So you don't need to have you know, well, brother, sister, you got to come to the classes and you got to marry this brother. You know, like IUIC, which they're going off. From what I heard, they can correct me if I'm wrong. If they tell me, no, we don't do that. I'll say I'm wrong. I'll make a video apologizing. But from what I heard or hear is that they have arranged marriages. Oh, well, you're going to marry this sister. No, you can't marry her because we got her set up to marry another brother. So now let's come back over here. Why do some Hebrew Israelites threaten people? Let's come back to the beginning. Let's 
justify triumphalism right now. But let me tell you what's really going on. The church, to be frank with you, has totally ignored you guys for a long time. They haven't put you. And we wish you would too. We wish you would too, because we don't. We didn't, you know. We don't take you seriously. You're you're an ongoing joke. It's because the doctrine is so horrendous that a lot of people don't even take it serious. And so you guys are the doctrine is so horrendous. Look up the word horrendous. We teach the New Testament. We teach the Old Testament. We teach the laws. We wear fringes because it's in the in the scriptures. Um. We teach that Messiah is coming back, but the Messiah is coming back for the Israelites, which is scripture. There's plenty, there's plenty of scriptures that speak about the Messiah is only coming for the sons of Israel. Matthews 10, 5, and 6, a basic foundational scripture. You can't get around that. The Lord gathered the 12 together and said, Don't go around where the Gentiles are at. Don't go to any Samaritans. But go rather to the Lord, sheep of the house of Israel, national Israel. And as you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand for who? For the Israelites. That's it. Oh, he would have said, well, you can go to some of them. There's some cool Gentiles and Samaritan. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. So how, how, is, our, uh, how, how is our doctrine horrendous? Everything that we say, all of what Wesley say, every time they make a statement, they back it up with the scriptures. So this man is a true devil. And then you know what? This guy's learning. He used to call us going from precept to precept. He said, that's Hebrew hopscotch. Well, guess what? You have applied um, the technique, the method of Hebrew hopscotch when you do your videos. Now, if you go here and you come over there, that's, that's what you call, you deemed it. Uh, you labeled it, adopted it, Hebrew hopscotch. That's what you're using, Hebrew hopscotch. Now you even kind of believe in the, you, you know, the, the, uh, the apocrypha. Let's let's listen. Let's listen on. Let's listen on. We've been running around, bad mouthing the church, dissing people, debating construction workers with their lunch pails as if we won some victory, or some Pentecostal lady who doesn't want to talk about some homeless guy who's not inebriated and being all amped up because you defeat them or smash them. Now things are changing. Slowly but surely, the apologists are coming in, and you guys aren't going to be able to have a free pass doctrinally anymore. Oh, the one apologist, uh, uh, what, what do you mean? Me and him was going at it. When they came up, they rolled up on us, and I asked him a simple question. That this man is supposed to be a, uh, uh, he'd been in Christianity for a number of years. He's a Christian teacher. I asked him a simple question concerning Paul. Well, that's the apostle of the Gentiles, right? That's what you say. I said, what nationality is the apostle Paul? He's looking at me, and I can bring the video up if you don't believe me, if it's still up there. Vocab put the video up. I asked him a simple question. What nationality was the apostle Paul? Uh, you tell me. Uh, uh, you, uh, what, and I played, I saw I couldn't answer it, so what do you do? You keep asking him. What? I, you, I didn't study what nationality is the Apostle Paul? I played him. I said, what nationality is the Apostle Paul? And he couldn't answer it. And then I believe I finally said he's, he's an Israelite of the tribe of Benjamin. Now, you being an expert, all you got to do is go to what, what do you mean on YouTube and you get it. He's supposed to be a Christian ex expert and he couldn't answer a simple question. I didn't ask him a tough question. I didn't ask him about the brazen, what's the name of the brazen snake in the wilderness, which is Nehushtan. I didn't answer that. I don't expect anybody to answer that too quickly, you know, like, like that. But the Apostle Paul, that's an easy one. What nationality is the Apostle Paul? I can believe I use a Christian. He was a Benjaminite. So you're not, you're not even. Equip. You wasn't equipped. And vocab didn't jump in the thing and say, "Yeah, he, he was a he was a Benjaminite of the tribe tribe of Israelite of the tribe of uh, Benjamin." And Christians would say, "Oh, well, Paul was a Roman. Yeah, he was a Roman citizen. Guess what? I'm an Israelite and I'm a, I'm an American citizen." Every time you Christians roll up, 
against the Israelites, the major one Westerns, you get smashed. Uh, let's let's listen. Let's listen to a little bit more. Some of you get really amped about it, and that's why I get threats against my life all the time by one more four. So that means it's phony three in the morning, right? Ring, ring, ring. Yeah, hello. We're going to get you, man. We're going to get you, man. You know, it might be Captain Tazariak. We're going to get you. We got the scope on you. Ah. No, that's not happening. That's not happening. That's not happening. Like I said, you 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 driving driving around. you truck driver, right? Somebody pulls up behind you with a headband and you'll hear the music in the, <laughs> in the background and the guy looks at you and he goes, Shalom, Holmes. Be careful when you're driving down that highway. This is some complete bullshit. This guy's a major bullshit artist, man. He's a, And he's a, a complete liar. Give me one threat. Give me one threat. He's, let me listen to it again. I'm, I got my lawyer's hat on. And you guys aren't going to be able to have a free pass doctrinally anymore. And what I've seen is some of you get really amped about it. And that's why I get threats against my life all the time by one Westerners because they don't really want to debate. They just want to see my life in. And you know what? Let me see. Let me do this. Let me do this. Let me go to all the time. All the time. Let's see what that means. All the, not all of the time, but all the time. All the time. Okay, I got to do it this way. Meaning. Meaning. All the time. Let me let you hear it. All the time. All the time. Phrase of time, right? Constantly or very frequently. The, he the airfield was in use all the time. What does it mean to be all to? What does it mean by all the time? Constantly, phrase, if somebody happens or is done all the time, it happens or is done continually, we can't be together all the time. I get the two of them mixed up all the time. They're so similar. Let's look up the word constantly. continuously over a period of time, always. Oh, do we have to look up always? That means your phone should be ringing right now. Give me a second, let me come back. That means your phone should be ringing right now. Hold up, let me get this. You better watch your back, Holmes. Shalom. It's, it's almost comical, man. But let's hear that again. I'm stretching this out. I'm spreading it like uh, butter on bread. Guy's a fucking habitual liar, man. Being all amped up because you defeat them or smash them. Now things are changing. Slowly but surely, the apologists are coming in, and you guys aren't going to be able to have a free pass doctrinally anymore. And what I've seen is some of you get really amped about it, and that's why I get threats against my life all the time by one Wester, because they don't really want to debate. They just want to see my life in. And I think you guys actually are the ones who are in the desperation stage because you realize that Christians are no longer giving your doctrine a free pass. It, things are changing, and it's going to get worse and worse because now you've got the failed 2,000-year prophecy, which you were there. Now the other side of things, the moderates, they've got the failed 2019 prophecy. You guys have got already two failed prophecies under your belt. So the real issue is 
I think you guys are in the desperation stages, and I just hope you're theologically ready. Threatening people is not – I'm not saying you threaten, but the threats that we get by other one questions, it's not going to fix it. What we've got to do – Say it again. The threats that we – not you, but the other one Westerns. Please do a video on that. Get, give me some, uh, I don't know, recordings. It maybe sound like Sicario, sound like Johanna Ball, Johanna, or sound like this guy, or that sound like that guy. This is a fucking bullshit because you're a damn liar, man. You 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 like that from the womb, uh, Psalms uh, fifty eight. From the womb, you're a serpent from day one. Who is have a discussion about the text? That's going to be where the real answers come in, about the text. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm looking forward to. I hope we can have more discussions about the text and less of this. Just wait till you're in chains and wait. Yes, just wait till you're in chains because you don't play. You play a rigged game. Like Nurse, nurse Ratchet, Ratchet, am I, if I'm saying a Ratchet from uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. See, this guy... R.P. McMurphy, if you saw that movie, great, excellent movie, classic movie. He played like he was crazy, so he put him in a crazy house with some real crazies, but the Gadite wasn't crazy either. He was playing like he, like he was crazy. There's a thin line between sa sanity and insanity, and you have and you have damn near crossed over. He's going, he going crazy, man. He bugging the hell out. He's losing sleep. Anyway. You know, R.P. McMurphy knew that the nurse ratchet was playing a game, mind game with him. So he said, "I'll, I'll play mind games with her," but she, but she, she cheat, she, 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 uh, did anything? He did certain things to get him jacked up, with, which wasn't a part of the game. So he made a statement. He said, "Um, how did he say it?" He said, "She's playing a rigged game." She's playing a rig. That's that. That's a T-shirt right there. Anybody put the T-shirt together? Can you make sure you send me a check. Let me see if I can put that quote quote up. Let me put that quote up. She's playing a rigged game. Rigged. I believe that's a double G. E D. Let's hope. She's playing a rigged game. Let's try this. I'm almost positive. Give me a second. Yep, this is it. This is it. I'm not going to let you hear it. Let me do this. Let me do this. Okay, this is from the movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. So they're evaluating him and he's playing a game with Nurse Ratchet. I think that's how you pronounce her name. And the, the doctor brings it up. And then he says, she's playing a rigged game. You can watch it. She's like, oh, no, no. She likes a rigged game. She's like, she likes a rigged game. She doesn't play fair. They were playing mind games with each other. He had no problem with it. She was playing mind games with him. You got to watch the movie. But then she was doing certain things that went outside of the mind playing game. So that's what this clown is doing. This is the nurse ratchet of Christianity. <laughs> nurse ratchet. There's a nurse ratchet right here. You know? He'll make a video about the 400 year prophecy, was, was a false prophecy. And one video he did a couple years ago, he had me. And on the thumbnail. And then in the video, he said, oh, well, the one West Tahar doesn't teach that. But why would you put me in the thumbnail? Oh, Tahar teaching that? That's called clickbait, nigga. Let's listen to a little bit more. Now, I'm not saying 
not saying you said that, but you gotta understand. I get that stuff That's all the time. Thing. I get that stuff all the time. So see what I'm saying? Here's what it looks like. Let me just like it's like a friendly piece of advice. When you're debating a Christian and they get you in the scriptures, if you resort to just wait till you're in chain. He never got us in the scriptures, period. When did he get us in the scriptures? When did he ever get, get us in the scriptures? Never. Change in slavery. It makes it look, it makes it look like you're desperate. Because instead of de debating the issue, all of a sudden you're just threatening people, basically. You see what I'm saying? It's a bad look. I'm trying to help you guys in a certain sense. The devil's trying to help us. That's another, that's another uh uh, uh, another title for a video. The devil is trying to help us. The thumbnail, you have a picture of uh, fathead vocab alone. You're losing badly. You're losing so bad to the point where we don't even take you seriously. Image, because look at what happened, man. We've got almost 12, 12 bodies. The body count of one West. Yeah, a dozen bodies for one West. And you're a small religion. So to have a body count of 12 that we know about is a big deal. Yeah, they're all one West Tampa. Everybody was murdered. Yeah, well, what was any of them? Uh, well, um, uh, GMS? Any of them? Uh, ISUPK? Any of them Sakari? Um, it could have been somebody that followed one of those groups. Now, in the case of... Uh, IUIC, I'll speak in their behalf. It was a member that they were about to kick out the camp because he kept his name get, kept being brought up and he was told not to with, be with the girl and he got up with the girl and he wound up killing the girl. You can't blame that on the IUIC. The IUIC didn't tell this guy or teach a class, if your woman looks at you the wrong way, you know, bury her. No, it happened to be a guy that was a, a, a Nigerian. You got to watch out for the Nigerians. Just joking, but a lot of Nigerians in the camp. But uh, uh, he did it, so it was on him. If a Roman, if a person kills somebody, he's a Roman Catholic. You don't put the Roman Catholic Church on trial. Oh, we found out he murdered five people, and he was all, he murdered his wife. But he's a Roman Catholic, so Roman that that means, according to you, your twisted, warped brain. If you become a Roman Catholic you're going to eventually wind up killing your wife on insurance money. You see how stupid that sounds? Anyway, with that, pretty much, I didn't go on the scriptures, but I quoted, I quoted certain scriptures. Uh, pretty much, I'm going to say Shalom.